This episode is called Installing a Planet Lab Node. And what we're going to talk about today is how to install a Planet Lab Node from scratch. The audience for this particular segment is for technical contacts at a registered Planet Lab site. Um, the tutorial should run about five minutes. Actual running time will be somewhere around 60 minutes, depending on your network connection. The dependencies for this process are your site needs to be registered with Planet Lab. If your site is not registered for Planet Lab, please go view the segment on registering a site with Planet Lab. You, the person who's actually doing this segment, needs to be registered as a technical contact under Planet Lab. You can log into the Planet Lab site and make sure you have the capability as a technical contact. And you should make sure that you've already uploaded your SSH key. The equipment you're going to need for this segment is a recent Pentium computer. We prefer if it's a dual core. It should have at least one gigabyte of, of RAM. We prefer that it have two to four gigabytes of RAM. It needs to have a CD-ROM or a USB key. If you have a USB key, then you need to have a one gigabyte USB drive that you can leave in the machine. In terms of network dependencies, this computer needs to be connected to the internet without a firewall or a network address translator, a NAT. Check with your system administrators and make sure that you can put this computer directly on the internet. All Planet Lab nodes are on the internet. They're not behind firewalls. They are not in a secure environment. That's part of the fun of running Planet Lab. The other network dependency is that you need to have a public DNS name for this node. During the installation process, there's some information that you should have ready at hand. You need the IP address of the node that was registered under the DNS name. You need the net mask. You need the gateway address, the broadcast address, and two DNS servers that will respond to this node. Those we're going to enter into the Planet Lab system when we register this node. The first step in this tutorial is to log into the Planet Lab site. What we've done here is we've logged into Planet Lab Europe and we can see all of the capabilities that we have. On the right hand side we have add node. Add node is to add a node to Planet Lab. As I select that we have the details here. The first step is to add the host name planet4.cs Hebrew University academic environment. The model is not important can leave it as custom. If you happen to have a computer and you want to let us know what type of computer it is, you can add something. The next step is to choose whether it's DHCP or static. We suggest that you use a static. If your node happens to boot off a DHCP, that's okay. In any case, please enter the IP address for this new node. The net mask. the network address, the gateway address, the broadcast address, and two DNS servers. If you don't have this information, you may want to contact your system administrators and have them be the technical contacts for your site. I'll click Add, and I get a notification that the node has been successfully created. The next step is to click here and view the node details. Here's our node. We see that it's part of a number of other nodes that have been connected to this site. And now we have to download the appropriate boot image. I collect, click on download. I click on download. In this case, we're going to boot this off a USB image. The two most common options are a CD-ROM image or a USB image. CD-ROM images are very simple. You download it, you burn it to disk, and then you insert the disk into the machine and boot. USB images are slightly more complicated and we're going to use that for this tutorial. 
I select that. I once again have the option of reviewing the data to make sure that everything is correct. And I'm going to download the USB image. We've now downloaded the USB disk, USB image. We see that it's approximately 54 megabytes in size, and it ends in .usb. That tells me. What we're going to use is an open source tool called USBit, the USB image tool. So here we see the, U, the USB disk on key that I've inserted into the computer. In our case, it's a one gigabyte USB. In fact, anything more than 60 megabytes would be sufficient for this use. We're going to select the disk that we want to use, and we're going to click on Restore. USB asks us now for an image. Now, we're not using the normal sizes, the normal names, so we're going to select the USB image, Planet 4. It says, do you want to restore this? Yes. Once this is done, we can close everything up and eject the USB disk.